Hi, I'm John Calarco, Holistic Health and Performance Coach. In this video, I'm going to show you how to stretch your hamstring muscles with the band assisted hamstring stretch. Unleash your power, achieve your potential. If you spend a lot of time sitting or feel like you have an excessively tilted pelvis that's tilted backwards like this, or if you feel like your hamstrings are tight, or even if you have low back or hip pain and you want to start to address some of these issues and increase the flexibility and mobility of your lower body, start to correct your lower body posture and improve your lower body movement function, then make sure you watch this video to the end. For most people, they actually have a pelvis that's tilted forward like this, or we call that an anterior pelvic tilt, and they generally have that because their glutes, okay, their glute muscles and their abdominal muscles don't function as well as they should. So that puts them in that position sitting for long periods during the day doesn't help either in terms of being in that position. So some people feel like their hamstrings are tight, but actually they're just in this inefficient pelvis position for the hamstring to come up into that flex position. And so they feel like their hamstrings are tight when they come into a hamstring stretch. So if that's you, then it actually would probably be more important for you, not probably, definitely would be more important for you to actually focus on developing the strength and conditioning of your glutes and your abdominals and even doing some hip flexor mobility. I just showed you that in my last video, so you can check that out if you need to review that. So that's what you should focus on primarily to correct this issue if you feel like your hamstrings are tight. But if you don't have that issue, or even if you do have this issue of a tilted forward pelvis, it's still okay to stretch your hamstrings as I'm gonna show you today, just we need to get you into a neutral pelvis position and that's the key long term to correct the pelvis dysfunction that you may have and it's the key for performing this exercise correctly. So the hamstring muscles, as you know, probably, are on the back of the thigh. There are a group of three muscles that start right up at the top of the back of the thigh and they span down the back of the leg and they attach, actually cross over the knee joint and they attach just to the top of the back of the lower leg here, okay? So those are the muscles that we'll be stretching today. So to set up for the hamstring, the band assisted hamstring stretch, we're gonna come onto the ground, all right? Ideally on a soft mat so that your bones aren't rubbing into the ground hard there as we lay on our back here. And then I want you to take a band around the midfoot here, okay? Just below the balls of the foot, all right? That's gonna be key because we don't wanna get a lot of pointing in the ankle as we go through this exercise. And then from there, once you have the band in position, Let's choke up on it a little bit so we get some good tension on the band. That's gonna be important for the second portion of the exercise as we go through it. Then from there, we're gonna take the other foot, we're gonna make sure our feet are in line with our hips. All right, legs are gonna be straight to start. Once you're set up there, you're gonna lay onto your back, okay? Resting the head, all right, relaxing the shoulders, but keeping that tension here on the band. All right, to initiate the movement, we're gonna go ahead and exhale through the nose, all right, nice and smooth and slow, and we're gonna focus on contracting through the hip flexor muscles and the quad muscles, all right, to bring the leg up into this hamstring stretch. We're gonna hold for two seconds. Again, really focus on contracting through the opposite muscles here. That's really key to help us get the best stretch possible. And then, once we hold for two seconds, we're gonna actively push down against that band tension just like that. So we're getting some activation of the hamstring muscles as we push down and return to the start position. So again, we're gonna exhale as we initiate and then we'll inhale as you bring it back down. So I'll show you a few reps. Okay, so that's the first portion of the band assisted hamstring stretch that we're gonna do. Then we're gonna go ahead and allow the knee to bend. So we're gonna get a slight bend in that knee. We're gonna do the same exact movement pattern. We're gonna exhale. We're gonna contract through those hip flexor muscles. All right, now the quads aren't gonna contract because the leg is slightly bent. Now we're gonna get a stretch higher up in the hamstring. All right, again, return to the ground after holding for two seconds. Exhale, contract through those hip flexor muscles here. Keep that tension on the band so when you push down, you're pushing down against some tension. All right, that tension that we push down against is gonna get us some more activation in the hamstrings. That's also gonna help improve the mobility of our hamstrings here as we go through this exercise. So that's how we set up and perform the exercise. All right, we're gonna obviously feel the stretch in the hamstrings here. Now, when the leg is straight, 
you're also gonna feel a stretch in the calf, and that's great. We're gonna get some good calf mobility at the same time when we do the straight leg variation here. All right, and then when the knee is bent, we should just feel the hamstring higher up. Maybe the top half of the hamstring is more so what we're gonna feel when we do that second portion. Again, make sure you're contracting actively through the hip flexor muscles and through the quads when we're doing the straight variation. Again, that's gonna neurologically relax the hamstrings and allow us to act actually move better as we come into hip flexion here, and that's, gonna, that's really the key in, into improving our mobility is to get the muscles that move us into the range of motion that get this muscle on stretch to relax. So make sure that you feel those muscles actively contracting as you go through the exercise. Now, common mistakes to avoid here. I spoke to you already about the pelvis position. Now, I have this foam roller here. You may have been wondering why. Um, what we're going to do with the foam roller, if you have an excessive arch in the lower back, all right, and laying in this position and activating, you know, and driving through the hip flexors, which also engages the abdominal muscles here. If that doesn't get you into a neutral pelvis position and you're still kind of arched like this, right, like we talked about earlier, then a really good thing to do here would be to take a foam roller and place it under the legs here into the star position. Now, what that's gonna do is similar if you've ever had any back pain before and you're laying down and you're told to sleep with pillows under your legs, it's gonna kind of accomplish the same goal. It's gonna bring your lower back closer to the ground and tuck that pelvis under here, all right, automatically in neutral. So that may be where you need to start. Again, if you have an excessively arched position here, you may need to start here with the foam roller if you wanna perform this exercise with the proper technique, all right? But again, the long-term fix for that would actually be to improve the function, the strength and conditioning of your glutes and your abdominals. Then that would automatically get you into the right position. So again, I'll address that in future videos, so make sure you stay tuned for those. Now, again, that's really the biggest mistake you wanna make sure that you avoid. Other little mistakes to make sure that you avoid, <clears throat> I mentioned this one earlier, make sure that you're not pointing the toe, all right, excessively as you come up. That's gonna take the stretch off of the calf and the hamstring to a degree, all right, when we do the straight leg variation. Uh, then also make sure that this bottom leg here, you're not turning it out, right? We wanna be in a neutral position here as we go through, and actually make sure that you're keeping that leg just pressed gently into the ground so that we're getting some activation through the glutes of the hamstring on the bottom side That'll really help us to get better movement through this pattern and positioning. And it's also gonna, again, make sure that you don't turn that leg out because again, we wanna move better having our, ourselves in an aligned position. We don't wanna be externally rotated significantly through the hip as we perform this exercise and as we move in general. All right, so make sure that you avoid those common mistakes. Then from there, in terms of sets and reps, what we're gonna think about doing is one to two sets of five to six reps of each version, right? So five or six reps with the leg straight, five or six reps with the knee slightly bent. So you're hitting the hamstring you know, in the bottom portion and the calf, and you're getting the top portion as well. So think about that. Best times to do this exercise would be pre-workout, of course, post-workout are great times to do them. Great to break up long periods of sitting or whenever you feel like you generally wanna just open up your body. It's good to do before a walk. You know, we're really working on that hip flexion and extension, which is what you do when you walk. This is just kind of an exaggerated version, of course, uh, as we're going to those full ranges of motions of the hips. That's gonna be the best uh, times to perform it, but really is never a bad time to perform it. All right, so let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. If this was helpful for you, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, hit that like button so other people can see this content uh, and it will benefit them as well. If you do hit the like button, it shows the content to more people. And this exercise, again, is a, is a series of exercises where I'm gonna show you how to develop the mobility, the stability to be able to perform the hip hinge, which is one of the seven fundamental human movement patterns. All right, and that's gonna turn into your deadlift later. So make sure you stay tuned, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you get notified as I upload those videos to, videos to come in the series so we can get you deadlifting properly, which is an exercise where you're actually going to decrease the incidence of potentially injuring your low back, believe it or not. I know some people are kind of afraid they're gonna injure their low back with the deadlift, but actually, if we do it properly, it's a great way to prevent low back injuries and prevent lower body injuries in general. We're gonna strengthen our glutes and hamstrings with that as well. So doing those strength and stability exercises that I'm gonna show you in the future videos is really gonna help cement and uh, make sure that you maintain these range of motions that you start to open up and create by doing mobility. So again, I'll see you in the next video. Hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, unleash your power, achieve your potential.